Hi, I'm Roger. Thanks for joining me again in my own little kitchen. It's still summer. It's still strawberry season. So here's another strawberry recipe. These are strawberry shortcake scones. <music> They're kind of easy to make, they're very tasty, and they come together pretty quickly. I have the oven heating up to 425 degrees while I make this. I have two cups of flour, one tablespoon of baking powder, three tablespoons of sugar, and a half teaspoon of salt. Now I want to pulse it a little bit. Put it on for a little bit. Pulse it a little bit more. The reason why you want to do that the sugar granules are heavier than the flour, so you want to make sure that everything's incorporated. Now I have six tablespoons of diced butter. I have it chilled. You want to make sure it's chilled. I actually had it in the freezer for a little bit. But then I just zapped it in the microwave for about 15-20 seconds so that it wouldn't be hard as a rock, but still chilled. You're going to want to run this until the mixture looks kind of grainy, almost like beach sand. Now I'm going to add 12 small strawberries that I hulled and diced. You want a small dice on this. They're going to chop up a little bit more in there anyway. This batter is going to become pink. So we're going to push this down to get it started a little bit. There we go. Now I'm adding three quarters cup of half and half. It looks almost like strawberry ice cream. And you can see that this is still a pretty wet dough, thick but wet. As I put it out on the cutting board, I'm going to have, I know I'm going to have to add flour to it. from the 
mixer on here and as you can see it's still very difficult to handle. So I'll sprinkle more flour over the top. The board is very well floured too. And I'll just keep mixing things together until it gets a little thicker. Now normally with scones you would pat it into the shape of a pie and cut it in slices. This recipe I've tried a couple times. It's just a little bit too thin. I don't want to add so much flour that I can do that because it will take away from the lightness of the scone. So I just do it this way until I get a workable dough. Work the flour in. I just dollop 12 pieces of this onto a parchment lined cookie sheet. And you might come across some recipes and it'll say baking sheet, baking pan. And you go, well, what's the difference? A baking sheet is flat. Maybe it has an upturned edge on one side, but for the most part, it's flat. A baking pan on the other side is raised all around. You use baking sheets more for cookies, pastries, you use baking pans for uh, maybe pizzas, things along that line. Things that have, that need edges so that they don't go over the side. I know this looks like a glop, but trust me, it's very tasty. Okay, you're probably wondering what this is. This was given to me by a former neighbor, loved her to death, and what it does, you use it as a cookie scoop. Instead of a scoop, you just scoop up on here and it presses it right off. So I'm going to do 12 of these. I'll try to get an evenly sized. I always make adjustments after all the batter's up. Batter up! Oh, sorry. You want to try to keep a somewhat rounded shape to it. But you can see why this would be almost impossible to make into a, a round pie shape and then try to cut it from there. Those of you from my generation are probably thinking of the movie The Blob. A B-class science fiction movie. One of the earliest movies that Steve McQueen was in. Now we will put these into the preheated oven and they go for about 8 to 10 minutes. Now it's cleanup time. Where's my help when I need it? So the scones are done. So let me make the glaze. I have three cups of powdered sugar, a quarter cup of half and half, 
and a half teaspoon of vanilla extract. Let's get these out of the way. I always keep the extra half and half around because sometimes it just isn't enough to get the consistency that I want to be able to drizzle. And you might say, wow, three cups of powdered sugar and you only need a quarter cup of, of half and half and a half teaspoon of, of extract and that's going to be enough? Look what happened to the three cups. I'm almost, almost there. I like mine a little thinner than that. So, let me add a, a few more drops. You only want to add a couple drops at a time because it goes from thick to thin very quickly. Getting closer, another few drops and we'll be ready. And if by some chance you accidentally add too much cream, then you could always add more powdered sugar. There we go. Perfect. You want to make sure that the scones are still pretty warm so that the glaze melts over them. Not straight out of the oven. These came out about five minutes ago, but I put them back into the warm oven while I was making the glaze. So with the heat, the residue heat still from the oven. I mean, I can, I can pick them up, but that'll be just right for the drizzle. What I like to do, because I don't like to, to waste a lot of the drizzle, I get them as close together as possible. Maneuver it around with the back of the spoon. It always looks so impressive when it starts melting down the sides. And you can see how quickly they spread over the warm scones. Now to add a little bit more. I chopped up a few more little strawberries while the icing is still soft before it sets up. And there you have it, folks. Strawberry shortcake scones. You might ask what makes it a, a shortcake. If you noticed, there were no eggs in this batter. So that makes a different texture. Well, I don't know about you, but I think I need to put on a pot of coffee. Thank you for joining me. This is Roger. And thanks for joining me in my own little kitchen.